Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Learn to Play Piano with Charlie, where today we're going to talk about ways to make your right hand octaves legato. So we had an episode not too long ago about how to play legato, and that was a very kind of general, all-encompassing thing. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to specifically make right hand octaves sound legato even without pedal. Of course you can use pedal sometimes, and you probably will a lot of the time, but you don't want to rely entirely on it. So before we start, uh, hit the like button, favor, subscribe, all that stuff, and if you aren't on YouTube, head on over there and subscribe, because that's cool, and it helps the algorithm. All right, so, legato, as we talked about in one of the previous lessons, is basically when you're playing smooth. So this is not legato, and this one is, right? But if you're playing with an octave, it can be problematic because your fingers are already spread out. So if you're playing, it can be pretty, pretty difficult. And, um, if you pl play with the pedal down, it can be blurry, um, you can flutter pedal, but you kind of still hear the pop pop, it, it, it still has that kind of detache, detached sound. And a lot of times you really want to have a little bit more of a cohesive legato sound. So how do you do that with octaves? Well, the trick is you're going to basically do your best to finger the legato the top of the octave. So the bottom, you're not going to have too much of a choice because it's pretty much going to be played with your thumb. But if you're playing, it's kind of hard to play that legato if you're just playing uh, thumb and five finger. But you can actually go between your three, four, and five on the top part of your hand, with the top part of your hand, to connect that top. So you want the top to be as legato as you can. Sometimes you're going to have to skip, but you could, that's where a little flutter pedal can play in. But don't worry about connecting the, the thumb because ultimately people's ears are going to go mainly toward that top note. So if you can connect the top, this is no pedal. Oops. It, it's still pretty legato. And it might sound a little bit weird, but with a little flutter pedal, You, it sounds a whole lot better. If I were to play that same thing with just pedal and just one and five, it sounds completely different. Right? If I, again, try to use my three, four, and five fingers and cross over when, when appropriate, like this. Now, not only can you cross over, but you can do the little finger switcheroo thing. So, for example, in this particular example, uh, I'm going five, um, my top fingers are going five to three, five, three, four, five, and then I'm silently switching to either three or four so that I can have room to go up to the five again. Five, four, four to three, switch. Five, four, three, five, four, five. So you can do a little switcheroo, and then you can basically make it pretty legato even without pedal. There's a skip part because I'm skipping way, way down. And, it's, and again, there's going to be some times where it's going to be hard to do, but that's where the pedal kind of, kind of, you know, blends it together. So it ends up being. You get a much better legato kind of a sound, and this can be really applied to a lot of different things. Another trick, besides the using your three, four, and five fingers to kind of, you know, uh, switch and go between to keep the top note as legato as possible, is to uh, basically think in terms of long lines and shaping. So, especially like, here's a good example, the part where you have to skip down. I mean, there's, there's very little you can do. Um, you can do five to four, five, four, five, and switch and stuff, but five, five, four, five, four, five, four. Uh, and that kind of works, but if your hands are smaller, it can be tougher. But in general, in this section and in all sections, if you kind of uh, shape the music and keep those long lines in your head uh, and try to bring them out, dynamically and in terms of direction and in terms of just phrasing and shaping, you can make it seem like it's, it's connected even when they aren't as connected. If I were just to play... It's very, very truncated and very, very split up, right? But even if I'm not using the, any kind of a flipping, uh, uh, a finger switching or anything like that, if I have the dynamics go, right? By 
by shaping it, it automatically has more of a long kind of a, 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 a long line. And that can really psychologically make it seem like it's connected as well. And then if you combine that with the finger crossing over and switching thing. difference. And then when you add the pedal, then you've got just So those kinds of things can really help. Of course, and this applies to all of this and pretty much anything ever, you don't want to uh, uh, tighten your hand and wrist and arm and all that kind of stuff. You want to stay loose. You want your fingers, arms, wrists, hands, all that stuff to always be loose because if you start tightening up, you could get hurt even permanently, and um, it also affect your playing in the short term. So it can affect your playing short term and long term, and it can affect your uh, whether you get like hurt, uh, injured. Uh, in you know, and in, in that injury can be a short term injury or it could be a long term injury or both. So um, make sure that if you ever do get tight anywhere, you know, you you stop playing and you figure out how to not get tight because that's really really important. Staying loose is very important. And it'll also help you play better too, I think. So anyway, I hope this is kind of helpful. This is a very, very specific kind of a niche topic, but it can be very, very useful in all kinds of pieces where, where octaves are used. And it's especially important with the right hand. I guess it can be applied to the left hand as well. Um, but since the left hand is so much lower and the right hand is, such more, is so much more prominent and oftentimes is more melodic and is involved with more of the melodies and pieces, uh, the right hand uh, is probably where we're going to use it the most. Anyway, hope that's helpful. Uh, leave me a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.